In this video, I'm gonna talk about the care and propagation of night blooming cactus, also known as epiphyllum cactus or epis, and how you can grow a beautiful blooming cactus like this from just a few cuttings. Let me take you on a journey with one of the first free plants that I ever found uh, and went on to propagate. Uh, this is a queen of the night cactus, AKA an epiphyllum cactus, or some people call them serious cactus or epis. Um, and this started out as a cutting that my neighbor had left out when they were cutting back their garden and they left out a box of lots of different plants and among them was pieces of this cactus. So very excitedly, I brought it home. Um, I cut it up into a lot of smaller pieces um, because I was trying to get the most um, free plants out of this propagation. Now at the time, we're going back to 2020. This is when I first started my free plants forever TikTok account and I was a total propagation noob, had never worked with these plants, uh, let alone that many succulents before. Um, so I didn't know that you do need to let these callus over before you place them in soil for propagation. So I cut them, put them directly in the soil and then watered them. And that was a big no-no. So many of the little cuttings were lost. They just turned completely to mush um, and rotted away. Um, but the remaining cuttings, I did realize pretty quickly what had gone wrong. Um, I set them out to callus. And then because I was a little bit nervous about propagating them in soil, I did place them into damp perlite to try and propagate them that way. Perlite was really effective. They did root fairly quickly. So I went ahead, took those rooted cuttings out of the perlite and planted them into a small terracotta pot where they were quite happy and lived for almost two and a half years. As far as epi cactus goes, there's many different varieties. The first one I found was a little bit chunkier, um, but the same neighbor did end up leaving another variety of epis out. Um, this one was much bigger, a lot thinner leaves. Um, so again, I tried the same method of propagation as I did the first time, but this time I did ensure that the leaves had calloused over before putting them into a soil propagation. Now, these are very much like propagating snake plants. You can cut them into smaller pieces and get new propagations out of each of those. You do wanna ensure that the top of the leaf is in the top and the bottom of the leaf is the one in the soil as that is the only place it will root. It won't root if it's placed upside down. So I often do these kind of arrow shaped cuttings and that is just an indicator for me which way is up and which way is down. So you could propagate these in soil, you could propagate them in perlite, sphagnum moss. I prefer to propagate my more cactus and succulent type plants in a drier medium such as soil, perlite, or sphagnum moss. Um, it doesn't mean you can't propagate it in water. I just find there's more of a likeliness that you're going to have your propagation rot. So I just left those plants to do their thing. In the case of the first one, I left it for two and a half years. In the second one, it was just over a year. So in that time, in that two and a half years, they rooted, a lot of them began to branch out significantly and they were starting to go a little bit yellow. It was really ready to move into a bigger pot. A little Christmas present for myself, an upcycled plastic hanging planter. Finally gonna plant my night blooming cactus. This was only a teeny tiny piece that I started with and it's already created these three long babies. It was the kind of thing where I was just running out of room. I threw it into this flat tray where I put a lot of succulent propagations. I might use some tools to get this out without causing too much damage. I find some of these little succulent tools, these like miniature things have been so useful. Really great tools to have on hand. Gently. work this out you can see actually there's the roots are kind of going off to the side it's going to disrupt some of my succulent propagations but that is okay here we go <laughs> wow so that one little piece created all this root system which is why it's so happy i'm just going to take these out place them back in so i like to use 
a really good cactus mix for this kind of thing. This is a cactus, um, which means it's got a little bit of organic material. There's some sand, um, pumice, um, possibly some perlite or lava rocks. It's pretty fluffy, so it means it gets some good drainage. Um, it doesn't retain too much water. It lets the water kind of seep through. Um, we don't want stuff that retains too much water because with cactus, that could cause rot. So I just, I'm gonna add a good bit of that. I'm gonna kind of make sure there's no hard chunks. Sometimes it gets a little bit condensed in the bag. So I'm gonna go through this, make sure it's nice and light and fluffy and pretty good. It's about halfway filled up. And I think that's a good place to start as far as placing your pups into. So I need to add a little bit more but before I put that one in, we're gonna take this one. So I'm just pulling it away from the pot pretty gently. I really don't wanna break this. So the roots are pretty condensed up. I'm gonna gently kind of work them without going too crazy. Again, they're succulents, so if you lose some of those roots, they should be fine as far as regrowing themselves. Other plants are a little bit more sensitive about the roots, but I do wanna kind of spread them out. So. So I think I need a little bit more soil, maybe like an inch or two. Start to put this back in. Like I said, I'm kind of breaking the roots apart gently, not going too crazy. So this way I can make a little dent in the pot and place these in. And then when I have everything placed where I want it to be placed, I'll add more soil to kind of keep it in place, hold it in place. And I wasn't that gentle, look, I lost little bit of a baby that was sitting there but it's okay so I'm gonna kind of place these some of them sticking out because it is a hanging hanging planter so that's the idea is that the branches will kind of start to hang out and now that they're kind of placed where I want them to go they're staying fairly in because the roots are going a little bit deep. I placed, I made holes, stuck the roots in. So they are pretty much staying in place. And now I'm gonna just add some more of the soil on top. And then I'll press them into place. And I'm kind of adding more because I know I'm gonna push it down. So this is what it's looking like right now. And gently without breaking any of the branches squish that soil down and into place knowing that when we water this the soil will get more compact again and I can either use my larger tools or my smaller more detailed tools to really place them So they're still pretty wobbly. And as I go through, I'm really squishing them in there, making sure the soil is covered, that the roots are covered. Okay, so far, this is looking pretty good. And I'm just going to test my hanging rope make sure that's in the right spot. 
And so that is looking pretty good. I think this plant is gonna be really happy in here. I'm gonna give it a bit of a drink because it's not a cutting. If I was doing these from cuttings, I would not water them for a long time, at least a month, but because they already are rooted, um, we can water this. Um, so you can absolutely um, do this with cuttings and even this little, this may or may not work, but this, this little tiny piece that fell off, I can just even stick that in the soil. It may root, we'll see. It's pretty tiny, so it might not, but I'm gonna at least give it a go. So I'm gonna give this a nice little soak. Um, help with the shock of this plant moving, but I think it's gonna be much happier because this is a much bigger bowl than it used to be in. And it's also gonna give it that um, chance to like fall sideways, which this plant likes to do. These plants are used to growing up into trees. So that's the situation that makes it the happiest, kind of going up and falling down. And I'm gonna hang this in um, a patio that has kind of like bright uh, dappled sun. I'll show you. And here is the spot that I keep it. It's in some nice dappled sunshine, not super hot or super direct sun, plenty of room for the branches to flow out and drainage hole for when I water. So here are these epiphyllum cactus today. This is the one that's obviously a little bit thinner. Um, this is the more chunkier one, the first one I got. Uh, they have all rooted. They have all really um, come to life. You can see the original cuttings looking a little bit worse for wear. Um, these ones especially. We just had a big rain event here, so they're probably, they probably got a little bit worn out and um, they are looking a little bit yellow, but that's okay. It is uh, winter time. It's about to come into spring soon. Um, and this is the perfect time um, to put in their care routine to make sure that they start to flower in the summertime. So these plants uh, being sort of like tropical rainforest plants, uh, they're not frost resistant. They do need to be kept above freezing. So if you're in a location that um, freezes, you will wanna keep this indoors, um, even in the wintertime and possibly move it outdoors in the summertime. One interesting thing about these plants is similar to the Christmas cactus, which is in the same family. Um, the seasons help the plant know when to flower. So unlike the Christmas cactus, which flowers when it gets uh, colder, these need the cold to tell them to sort of go a little bit dormant um, and then the heat of the summer to tell them to bloom. So if you do keep them indoors, um, you might want to move them into a colder room in the wintertime to kind of kick them into that, like knowing what season it is. Um, and then when it gets to be the warmer months, move it into a hotter room or more um, keeping it near a window. Say it gets colder in the winter near the window and then warmer in the summer. That's another option that you could do. Um, here in California, I keep this outside so it naturally um, gets colder in the, in the winter. Um, Right now, for me, it's uh, late January. It's about to go into February. This is a perfect time to start fertilizing it. So I am going to use a cactus um, or a succulent fertilizer. Alternatively, you could use just a general fertilizer, like a 10-10-10 um, fertilizer. So that means it's equal parts nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, and that will kind of return the nutrients. For me, this one's going a little bit yellow. That should turn it a little bit more green. Um, it's just looking for a little bit more nutrients. It's usually the nitrogen um, that is it is lacking that will bring the green back to the leaves. And um, as you can see, there's some little tiny buds appearing and I'm hoping that that means either new growth or flowers for the summertime. So I do wanna start the fertilizer regime soon and then fertilize it every two weeks. So this being um, a cactus type of plant, um, you don't want to keep it in uh, standing water. You do wanna make sure that it fully dries um, between each watering. However, if your leaves are looking a little bit wrinkly or floppy, um, it probably does need some watering. 
but all things considered for a plant that was started from a very small cutting two years ago. And in this one's case, uh, just about a year ago, they really are an easy plant to propagate and take care of. I hope this video has been helpful. I am always happy to answer any questions you may have. Just pop them into the comments. And of course, check me out on TikTok and Instagram. And of course, subscribe.